Hi, and welcome to Module 1, Containerized Delivery. In this module, we will guide you through the basics needed to deliver your applications using container technologies. Let's get started with the first step, understanding what containers are. So the first question to answer is, what are containers and what is containerization? Let's start with the first question, what are containers? Containers are an isolated, resource-controlled and portable operating environment for applications. They provide a place where an application can run without affecting the rest of the system and without the system affecting the application. If you were inside a container, it looks very much like you're inside a freshly installed physical computer or a virtual machine. When you create a container, then its external dependencies are packed with the container image. Containers have a layer of protection between the host and the container and between the containerized processes. Containers share the kernel of the host operating system. A container relies on the host OS for virtualized access to CPU, memory, network and registry. Containers are often compared to hardware virtualization technologies we all know as virtual machines, using either Hyper-V, VMware or VirtualBox. If you look at the way hardware virtualization works, you can see here in this diagram that we have the notion of a server and on top of that server we have a host operating system. That operating system supports virtualization through something called a hypervisor. On top of this hypervisor you install a new operating system which you then install your binaries on and your application. So as you can see in the diagram, this means that we are running multiple operating systems on the same hardware that is virtualized. Now if we compare this to containers, then we will see that the server and the operating system on top of this, but then we have the notion of containers. Containers enable the sharing of the operating system across multiple applications. So you see that we don't have a hypervisor here and we don't have any additional operating system instances. Every application is running on top of the shared host operating system and still op all applications are isolated from each other. So containers provide almost the isolation of a virtual machine, but the lightweightness of a process, making containers very fast and lightweight. So containers are not the same as virtual machines. The main difference with virtual machines is the fact that all containers share the same operating system, while virtual machines only share the hardware. Containers use the concept of operating system virtualization and virtual machines use the concept of hardware virtualization. Now containers provide a runtime environment that is considered to be immutable. This means that when you start a container based on a container image, you can then make changes to the running operating system, but the moment you stop the container and start a new instance of that same container, then all the changes in the previous container are discarded and you get a whole new container instance. If you capture the last change state, then you can, after you stopped a container, save the state to a new container image. When you create a new container instance based on the newly created image, only then you will see these changes saved in the container image from the previous instance. Containers are operating system capability. So the ability to run a container is something that needs to be built into the operating system. Microsoft added this capability to their Windows Server 2016 operating system and now also on Windows 10 anniversary update and beyond. Linux has had this capability of containers for a much longer time and this is where containers became very popular. So by now you might ask yourself, okay, but what are the reasons that containers have become so popular? Well, it's a very good question. Let us first start with the fact that containers are much less resource intensive than virtual machines have been in the past. This is caused by the fact that containers share the operating kernel and with that they share CPU, memory, drivers and disks. When you start a virtual machine, then you boot up a whole new operating system on top of the running operating system and you only share the hardware. With containers you share the memory, the disk and the CPU. This means that the overhead of starting a container is very low, while providing full isolation. Containers have a very fast startup time. Since running a container requires only a few extra resources of the operating system, the startup time of a container is very fast. 
the speed of starting a new container is comparable to starting a new process on your OS. The only extra thing on the operating system is that it needs to isolate the process from making things on its own. So this means that there's isolation done in the kernel, which is very fast. When you have a virtualization technique that is so lightweight as containers, then this gives the ability to achieve much higher server density. Now when you own hardware, you want to utilize that hardware as good as possible. With virtual machines, we made a first step in the right direction by sharing the hardware between multiple machines. But containers take this one step further and enable us to utilize this even better. And it utilizes memory, disk, CPU much more efficient. Since we only consume the memory and CPU we need it, we make better use of these resources. This means that less idle running servers are there in your data center, so you make better utilization of the data center. Especially for cloud providers, this is very important. The higher the server density being kept, the better the hardware is being utilized, and so it's much more cost efficient to run a data center. So it's not strange that containers are now getting a lot of attention and a lot of new tooling is built around managing and maintaining containerized solutions. When we talk about containers, then we also need to talk about images, since a container is a running instance of a container image. Let's first look at what an image is. A container image consists out of several layers. The first layer of the image is always the base operating system layer. This is where we require all files that come together as a shared operating system kernel and provide the operating system services. On top of the operating system layer, you then create new additional layers. Each layer is a delta of changes and this means that if you would, for example, want to have a container running Windows Internet Information Server, IIS, then I can add that layer that provides the IIS features by enabling the feature on the operating system. After we enable the feature, we can then stop the container and then commit the changes to a new image. When you commit the changes to the new image, you can then use that image as a starting point of a new running container. This way, you constantly add layers to images, until you have a container that is fully capable of running your own application. The container is a running instance of an image. This means that the operating system adds a very thin read-write layer on top of the container image. The nice thing about a container is that when you stop it, you create a new container based on the same image. That way, you have always a clean state. This way, we never pick up any changes to the image that you don't want. After stopping, you decide if you want to capture the layer or discard it. An image is immutable after it's been committed. Once you create an image, you cannot change it. Changing always means adding a new layer. To work with containers, you need tooling, which is provided by the operating system. Each operating system has its own tools to deal with containers. In the next chapter, we will have a look at the most popular toolset that is commonly used to work with containers on any operating system called Docker.